Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the TI graphing calculator to create a video, excuse me, not a video, <laughs> a graph of any function. And we're going to use y equals 5,000 minus 200x. So the first thing you want to do is go into y equals and enter in your function. So go ahead and type in 5,000 minus 200 and then an x. And then let's just go to our zoom button and you're going to want to remember to go down to all the way to zero to zoom, st not stack, excuse me, zoom fit. Oh, I passed it. There it goes. So zoom fit will give you what the calculator thinks is a good view. Firstly, it's not that great of a view because it's missing a lot of information. For one, where's the x-axis? It's just gone. This blank line tells me that we're above the x-axis. Furthermore, where is my x-intercept? I can't see that at all. So let's go ahead and fix this. So go over to your window and there's a few things that we need to discuss here. So I'm going to write these down. There's x-min, x-max, x-scl, so that's x-scal, there's y-min, y-max, and y scale. And before I do anything on the graph, I'm going to draw a little um, separate axes here. And here's x, excuse me, here's x, here's y. And let's label these. x min is here. This is the, oh, excuse me, that's not x min. Ah, here's x min. That's the smallest x value. And now x max is here. So that's um, as large of an x value that you'll see. So that'll tell you how your window's cut off. And then what's the scale? Well, the scale is the distance between these lines. So that, this distance. So that distance between those lines is the x scale. So now let's talk about this for the y values. So here's y min, and let me move this out of the way. So I'm going to cheat a little and adjust my screen. There it is. So I can move this. So y min is here. And then your y max is here. So then what your calculator is showing you is this window. Oh, that doesn't look like a square. There we go. So this is what you're seeing on your calculator. And of course, there's also, which I left off here, a Y scale. Let me do that real quick before I continue. So this ver distance between the vertical points is the Y SCL, so the Y scale. Now let's figure out how to adjust all of this because right now I don't like that we can't see our x-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and change the y minimum to zero and then look at my graph and see what that looks like. So I can look at the graph. Okay, that is better. I can see the x-axis. The scale here is decent. So these look like they're changing by ones. Um, our y scale is a thousand. That's really nice. So currently we have negative 10, 10, 1, 0, 7,000. And before I continue, I'm going to show you something. What if our Y scale was just 1? What would that look like? If you notice, I don't see any dots up here. This looks really thick. That's because it's trying to fit in 7,000 little lines on this tiny vertical space, which isn't gonna work. So let's go ahead and change that back to 1,000. If your calculator had it at one, you should change that to 1,000 so that you'll be able to see what I see. There we are. So I know this is one, two, three, four, that looks like it's 5,000. Um, but I want to see the x-intercept, so clearly there's a lot of dead space here, stuff that really doesn't matter, so I want to look at the graph going out this way. So I'm going to go to my window and kind of play a little game of guess and check. I'm going to change my x-min to zero, so let's go ahead and change that to zero now, and let's go change our x-max, say, to 20. Let's double it. 
And let's go ahead and look at our graph. Oh, we're really close. This is getting better. I can almost see the x-intercept. So let's keep going and change our x max to 30. But I don't want 30 little horizontal dashes. So I'm going to change my x scale to 5. So let's change this to 30 and my x scale to 5. And now I'm going to go ahead and regraph this. Now that is beautiful. That shows me that I have an x-intercept at 25, and I'll verify with the calculator. I'm just guessing by looking at the picture, and a y-intercept at 5,000. So if I look at my table, it's going to show me these numbers I don't really want to see. They're a little small, and I don't want to you know, tap all the way down to 25. So I'm going to go to second table set, and I'm going to start my table at 25, and I'm going to just move by increments of 1, so now I can go to my table, and I'm going to verify that 25 is an x-intercept. And if you notice, we have the point 25, 0. So indeed, my x-intercept is um, 25. And then for the y-intercept, I can do something really similar. I think the y-intercept is at about 5,000. So let's go ahead and start a table at 0 this time. And then go back to the table. And sure enough, there's the y-intercept. Now, what if you wanted to find this using calculator commands? We can do that, but let's give our window a little more space. So I'm going to go over here to negative 5 as my x min. Oops. And my y min, I'm going to do, say, negative 500. And now let's look at the graph. So that's really nice. I can see a little space above and below. So this is negative 500. Oops. negative 5, and there we go. So now these are what we're using for our window. You need these six values, x min, x max, x scale, y min, y max, y scale. Anywho, this is what our graph looks like. And if I want to find out what the x-intercept is, I'm going to go to second and then hit this trace button to get into the calc menu. And I'm going to go to number 2, 0. And I'm going to go here, and it says left bound. And in fact, I could click anywhere. I'm going to click enter here because I'm on the left side of this intercept. And then this is going to take a, a little bit of patience here. Just keep going over and over again, clicking all the way to the right. If you haven't watched the GeoGebra video, you should watch the GeoGebra video since it is a lot less tedious on GeoGebra. And then hit enter. And then I get to guess where I think the intercept is. And I'm going to scroll back here. Enter, and it tells me that my zero is indeed at 25. So now that that is done, let's just sketch our graph manually. So if you were going to sketch this, you do need to match it to what you see on the screen. So I'm going to count by fives on the x-axis. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And let's just go to 35. And I'll hit 35 here. There we are. And now along the vertical axis, let's go up to 7,000. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oops, 7,000. And now I can sketch my line. I have a point here at 0, 5,000, another point at 25, 0, and I can go ahead and connect these dots. My line is a little off, so let me move it, and there it is. So there is a good graph of y equals 5,000 minus 200x. We can clearly see the y-intercept. We can see the x-intercept. I can tell that the scale along the x-axis is moving by 5. I can tell that the scale along the y-axis is moving by 1,000. And this kind of graph would get you full credit. So if you ever see a problem that says clearly label and scale your axes, here I have my labels, and my labels show a scale.